the Archdiocese of Toronto, and the National Catholic Broadcasting Council. Through the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, presents Sunday TV Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your Welcome to the celebration of the Sunday televised Mass. I am Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Quebec. This Mass is being offered for the intentions of the family, for those attending the Mass, and for those at home. Our thanks to our donor for making it possible for tens of thousands of faithful across Canada and around the world to share in this celebration. Our readings call us to talk to us about prophets, Jeremiah and Jesus. So for the times that you and I have not proclaimed the word of God like these two, let us ask the Lord forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. <coughs> you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us praise God as we say, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We bless you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in the truth of heart, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Therefore, Gird up your loins, stand up, and tell the people everything that I command you. Do not break down before them, or I will break you before them. And I, for my part, have made you today a fortified city, an iron pillar, and a bronze wall against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its princes, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you, for I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My mouth will tell our Lord of your deeds of It's 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. Now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath, as was his custom, and read from the prophet Isaiah. The eyes of all were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him. And they were amazed at his gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son? Jesus said to them, Doubtless you will quote me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do here also in your hometown, all the things we heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in his own hometown. The truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah when heaven was shut up for three years and six months, and there was a severe famine all over the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except the widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them were cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up and drove Jesus out of the town and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they may hurl him off the hill. But Jesus passed through the midst of them, and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Jeremiah and Jesus, two prophets, one from the Old Testament, one from the New Testament. And both of them were failures. Jesus was the Son of God, the Word of God made flesh. And yet, as a prophet, he was a failure. He died nailed to the cross. In the eyes of those around him, they jeered at him. Jeremiah 
was also a failure. In fact, most of the uh, prophets didn't want to take on this job because they met with oppositions. They were thrown in jail. They were sent into exile. They were beaten. They were thrown into a well. So why would he want to be a prophet? And Jeremiah actually says that to the Lord. In chapter 22, he says, Lord, you have seduced me. You have trapped me. You have enticed me. And I allowed myself to be seduced, to be trapped, to be enticed. And while he was complaining that he was not ready to be a prophet, God put an end to it and said, look, I have called you. I have called you and formed you even before you were born. And it is my work that is going to be done. It's not your work. I don't depend on your skill or your ability. I am going to make you like a strong city, a pillar of iron, a bronze wall. I am going to support you. So Jeremiah was called to be a prophet, and God was going to be his support. When it came to Jesus, <clears throat> Jesus also had that same problem, that reluctance. We know in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Lord, let this father, let this chalice pass me by. And then on the cross, he would say, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? But that is towards the end of his prophecy, end of his ministry. We are here at the very beginning of his ministry. There's a little bit of a problem over here. Jesus is making his debut in Nazareth. For the first time, he is preaching. Um, Luke seems to say that he's already done work in Capernaum. He hasn't even gone there to do the miracles, to heal the blind, to heal the deaf, and as we heard in the responsorial psalm, to preach the good news to the poor. The people were all fascinated with Jesus. He is our homeboy. We have to share in his glory. And as Rene Girard said, everyone wants a part of the action and if you don't get that, then you kill the very person, the scapegoat, that got all the glory for you in the first place. And so they would rise against him. Ever since the Exodus experience, they were convinced that they were a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people set apart. And Jesus said, yeah, you are that. But there is something more than that. Salvation goes on beyond that. It is not only reserved for you. And as if to pour salt into the wounds, <clears throat> Jesus will give them two parables of how God's salvation extended to other people as well. One was the story of Naaman the leper. He was cleansed in the rivers of Israel, the River Jordan. There were other prophets around the place. There were other lepers around the place, but this enemy was healed, not the lepers. And then he came to the Sidon, the woman at Sidon. She was a Gentile. There were other people that were starving, and yet Elisha went to take care of her. So why did they do all this? And we have that answer in Paul's letter, that famous ode to love. Unfortunately, we have watered it down with sentimentality and emotionalism. We have printed banners, we have printed cups, we have done all sorts of things, and we have toned it down entirely. For me, I ask myself three questions. Can I truly rejoice and celebrate somebody else's success who is from a different culture, a different tradition, a different race from where I am. That is love. Can I truly rejoice and celebrate somebody's festivities that are not Christian? Can I really enjoy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Eid, and Diwali with the same enthusiasm as these people do? That is love. And finally, <clears throat> can I actually rejoice with somebody from a different political party from me and rejoice at their success and even throw a party from them? And that beautiful song says, love, love changes everything, hand and face, earth and sky. Love, love changes everything, how you live and how you die. 
And that is what happened with Jesus and with Jeremiah. True love changes everything. God bless you all. Would you join me now as we make our act of faith? <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us bring our prayers before God for Christians everywhere called to be witnesses to the good news of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have lost a loved one because of COVID and also because of delayed medical procedures because the ICUs and hospitals have been filled, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the homeless and the people forced to live on the streets during this frigid winter, and for those who help them, men and women, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sponsor from Quebec and for other sponsors and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the gifts you have given us. Help us to proclaim your word in and out of season through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God <clears throat> Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that this our sacrifice be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all of his church. Let us pray. O God, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for, for the waywardness that is ours, Jesus humbled himself and was born of the Virgin, by the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and all the clergy and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, and with all the saints who have pleased you to Throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of this year church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Your spirit. Wherever you are, let us share with those around you the peace and the joy of Jesus Christ. Take off. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to our eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go now in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. And praise the Lord.